Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and I live on the east coast of the United States, not all that far from New Jersey. I am sure many of you have been hearing about all the drone sightings happening around here and there's been a few in my home state of Connecticut as well. I do think many of these sightings are not drones but are actually just aircraft flying by, but there are some that are worthy of investigation. Now in this video, we're not going to talk about all that's going on with these drones, but rather how you can determine whether it's an aircraft or something that you might want to report to authorities or perhaps just your local Facebook group. And there's some great tools, some free online tools, but also some things that you can put together yourself that you can use to track aircraft that have ADS-B transponders. And a little later in the video, we're going to take this Android phone along with a cheap software-defined radio and build our own plane tracker, which might be a little more effective than some of the online services might be. And that way, if you see something flying overhead, you can take this thing out and determine whether or not it's really a plane overhead or something more nefarious. Now, before we get into this, I do want to let you know that this video is being brought to you by all of you. That includes everyone who watches and subscribes to this channel on a regular basis, but also those of you who contribute to the channel on an ongoing basis, either through the YouTube membership program with that join button down below, through my donor box page at lon.tv support, or through Patreon or Floatplane or Super Thanks or on a, our merch store, of course, where you can get some cool coffee mugs and other things. All of that help really keeps the lights on around here and I greatly appreciate it. So now, why don't we get into this week's topic and see how we can keep track of what's flying overhead. Now, what inspired this video and this little project was something I saw overhead the other night as I was driving around town after dropping my kids off at swim practice. I saw this very odd looking aircraft in the sky. Now, granted my alert level was up because of all that has been discussed around here lately. Um, but it looked like it was hovering for a short time and then it started moving pretty much over my car as I was driving through. And you can see what it looked like here from a zoomed in uh, look from my car's Tesla camera, which is on the front of the vehicle. And although it's hard to see here, it was lit in a very odd way. It did have all of your FAA lights on the left and the right, the colored lights, the red and green, but it also had very bright non-strobing lights on its wingtips. And as it flew overhead, I actually rolled down my window to see if I could hear it, if it sounded like a helicopter or something, and it didn't. It was relatively quiet, and it looked pretty large, too. It didn't look like a consumer drone, and it didn't look like an airplane to me, but it was dark outside, and the lights off of this aircraft were so bright, it was really hard to make out what structure was there in between all of the lights that were coming off of this. And so when I went home, I went over to the ADS-B exchange website, which I'll show you in a minute, that tracks aircraft over the skies based on their transponders that send out data about the aircraft's telemetry. And what do you know? There wasn't anything on the map for the time that I was driving through that area. And that got me to thinking, hey, maybe I saw a drone. So I picked up my phone and I called my uh, flight instructor because that's who you call when you've got an airplane question and I'm in the middle of getting my pilot's license. Actually, I'm at the very beginning of that process. Been a lot of bad weather around here lately, so I haven't had too many hours yet. And she said, you know, it's possible that that aircraft was flying too low to get picked up by the ground stations that submit data to these websites. So it could very well have been transponding, but nothing was around to pick it up. And that's what got me thinking about how could we pick up some signals from aircraft overhead without having to rely on one of these websites that get their data from other places. So enter software defined radio. This is gonna combine aviation gadgets and uh, my radio interest here all in one. So about a, two or three years ago, I did a video on this. This is called the RTL SDR. And this device is a software defined radio. It looks like a USB dongle. But you'll notice here on the end, it's got a spot for an antenna. You plug an antenna into it, and these little radios can pick up just about every inch of the radio spectrum. You can listen to all sorts of things and pick up all sorts of cool data. And I did a bunch of videos on this. This actually was the gateway drug to my amateur radio license, and I've got a bunch of content on radio that you can check out. And today what we're going to do is we're going to plug it into this phone with this USB-C to USB-A adapter. And we're going to connect up this relatively portable antenna that runs at 1090 megahertz. And this is the uh, frequency that most of the transponders on aircraft broadcast at. 
So if we've got a low-flying aircraft that goes below the horizon where some of these receiving units are, we should be able to receive it on this phone. Now the signals that we'll be picking up today are coming off of these ADSB transponder radios that are installed inside of aircraft and helicopters. And what these do is they broadcast out your plane's identification numbers. It also sends out your plane's telemetry, the position, the speed that you're going, the altitude that you are at. And all of that data gets pushed out on a constant basis so everyone in the airspace sees what you're doing. That includes fellow pilots, but also air traffic control. And from the pilot's perspective, when you are flying around with your ADSB receiver enabled, you can see where all the other planes are, what direction they are heading in along with their altitude. So for example, in this image, uh, our plane is in the middle here. And although we've got some planes close to us, they're actually much lower in altitude. You can see that minus 16 there. This plane over here is at the same altitude, but further away and heading in a different direction. So it's a very useful tool while you're flying, but it's not required. So if you are flying under visual rules, which I am learning right now, you still have to look out the window and make your turns to make sure that the airspace is clear before you start doing your maneuvers. So although we can pick up most planes overhead with websites like the ADSB Exchange or Flight Radar, uh, we will not always be seeing every plane because they are not always required to be sending out a transponder. It's good practice to use one, it's much safer to use one, but it's not a requirement in most airspaces. So why don't we see what this data looks like in practice. I am currently using the ADSB Exchange website, and again, this data is coming in from ground stations all over the place. And I'm gonna zero in on this plane right here, a little plane that's flying by. And this, as you can see, is a little Piper a PA-28, very similar to the one that I am currently learning on. And as you can see here, it is broadcasting over ADSB. I'll zoom in on it right there. And you get uh, the signal strength, but we also have all this telemetry here. So right now they are uh, at a 600 foot altitude, not far from where I'm located right now, pretty low in the sky. Uh, but perhaps not as low as some of these drones have been flying. And you can see they're now climbing up to about 800 feet now. It looks like they might be doing a sightseeing tour around the Connecticut River. But this is the kind of data that you can get uh, from an ADSB transponder. And you can also, in this website, click on here and see all the stuff that they've been doing. So they're definitely doing some flight training here, I think, uh, learning all the ropes and all the procedures that you need to follow to get your pilot's license. Now, I do like ADSB Exchange the best for flight tracking. And the reason is, is that you will always see more aircraft on this website than you will on something like Flight Radar 24. Flight Radar 24 is not a bad website, but they filter out aircraft that wish to remain private and they don't often get all of the little planes that might be flying overhead as well. So it's great for tracking airline flights, but not so great for tracking civil aviation or trying to figure out if something in the air is a drone or not. And some private jet owners can request that Flight Radar 24 not carry their data. Uh, ADSB Exchange just gives you the raw data as it comes through. But it's not foolproof here because, as I mentioned earlier, you could have an aircraft flying below the line of sight for some of the volunteer receivers that are set up looking for this information. So for example, just the other day, I had a Chinook helicopter fly right over my house at a pretty low altitude. It wasn't showing up on any of the uh, maps here, even though it was transponding elsewhere when it got further away. And I'm in kind of a desert for where uh, this information gets picked up. In fact, that a alleged drone that I saw on the road the other day was in another area where there was just nothing around to pick up a low flying aircraft. And that is where our little phone experiment comes into place. So let me go get this thing set up and show you what all the components are. All right, so I've got my phone here ready to go. There are two apps that I downloaded. One is called Dump 1090, which is a free app for tracking ADSB data. The other app here is a driver for the RTL SDR radio that we're going to plug in. These RTL SDR radios are super inexpensive and they often come as a kit with a few antennas. And the antennas it comes with are not as portable as this one is, but they do pick up 1090 data from aircraft quite well. So you don't necessarily need to get this antenna that I have here. 
I just got it because it makes this system more portable. And if I wanted to take this up on the plane with me, I can just grab this and not have a telescoping antenna getting in the way here. So what I'm going to do now is just plug in the radio into the phone. And what this will do is trigger that driver app to enable itself. And then I'm going to load up Dump 1090 and I'm going to hit the play button here and that will interface with the driver and start receiving data. Now, right now I'm in my basement, so we're not likely going to pick up anything right away here. But once I bring this outside, it will start picking up a lot of aircraft. And surprisingly, I actually got one already, but not a full data packet here. So what I'm going to do now uh, is capture its screen using some technology I have here at the house and set it up outside so that we can see what's coming in and see what planes we're picking up over the air. All right, so let's give this a go here. I'm going to hit the play button in the lower right hand corner here to start the capture. It's going to connect to that driver. And now we're starting to get data here. And I actually just went upstairs to my second level here where we've got a nice view of the window and we're picking up aircraft already. And you can also see all of the telemetry that's coming down too. Now, another cool thing about this app is that I can pull these airplanes up on a map here too and it will render them in just like one of these flight tracking apps will. Now I don't have anything low flying coming over right now, um, but there does appear to be a small jet here over the Long Island Sound. I can click on it. And in many cases, it'll actually find a photo of the airplane. But short of that, I've got all of the telemetry data here. So this one's at 7,700 feet, heading 225 degrees at 139 knots. I can pull up this airplane here. This one looks like a uh, airliner an Airbus, so you can do that. And I think what's really useful here is that if one of these planes was flying below what uh, something could get picked up by an ADS-B exchange repeater, uh, here I can get it because this data is coming directly into my phone. And this is the data that we're currently receiving over the air. So you can definitely get a better idea as to what is overhead, whether it's an airplane or something else, by listening for that transponder data directly. Now this of course was a portable solution where all you need is an Android phone and your RTL SDR and you're good to go anywhere in the field, but there are desktop solutions also. A friend of mine runs something called Virtual Radar that works with a Raspberry Pi or other PC and can allow you to have a little station set up to run it. Additionally, here in the US, while most aircraft are transmitting at 1090, there are some that use a different format at 978 megahertz. So there are two different uh, frequencies that this data comes in on. So to do this right, I would say probably get two radios and have both listening for that transponder data on both frequencies. But overall, I think if you are trying to figure out what that thing is in the sky, doing a little bit of research up front, I think will give you a better feel for what might actually be overhead. And remember, just because it didn't show up on one of these flight tracking websites doesn't mean that it's not transponding. It could just be that it's too low to get picked up by the listening stations that are trying to pick up this data. But when you have your own receiver, you'll have a much better shot at picking that up. So that'll do it for now. I just was prompted by that incident the other night and it led me down a whole rabbit hole. So now I'm making a video out of it. But it was really fun to see that something I already had here could actually do something pretty cool with just a phone anywhere I might be. That'll do it for this one. Until next time, this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching.